Welcome to a lesson on the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. Let's go ahead and take a look at our derivative rules. When you first look at this, it may be overwhelming, but upon closer inspection, we should notice that the right column is just the negative of the left column. So that should help us remember these. Again, the derivative of arc sine u and the derivative of arc cosine u are just opposites of one another. And the same is true for the derivative of arc tangent u and arc cotangent u, and the derivative of arc secant u and arc cosecant u. But let's see if we can derive at least one of these before we do some examples. Remember that the arc sine function is the inverse of the sine function. If we start with y equals sine x and want to find the inverse function, the procedure is to interchange the x and the y variables and then solve for y. Well, let's go ahead and just interchange the x and the y variable. So here we have the inverse sine function where y would be the angle and x would be the sine function value. Let's go ahead and model that in this right triangle. Our angle would be y and the sine function value would be x or x over one. So the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse would be x to one. Now using the Pythagorean theorem, we could find the length of this side as the square root of one minus x squared. Okay, let's go back to our inverse function and let's find the derivative of this and see if we can get it to match this derivative formula. So we'll take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. You can see we'll have to use implicit differentiation. The derivative of x would equal one. The derivative of sine y with respect to x would be cosine y times dy dx. To solve for dy dx, we divide both sides by cosine y. Let's go ahead and rearrange this. We have dy dx equals one divided by cosine y. But if we go back to our triangle, the cosine of angle y is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, or the square root of one minus x squared divided by one. So this would equal one divided by the square root of one minus x squared and this would be the derivative of the inverse sine function. If you take a look at what we just did and the formula for the derivative of arc sine u, they are exactly the same, except this one is in terms of u, implying we may have to use the chain rule, and this one we didn't have to use the chain rule. But now you can see where this derivative rule came from, and we could verify the other five in a very similar fashion. But let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. We want to determine the derivative of arc tangent square root x, Here's our derivative rule. Notice u would equal the square root of x, or x to the power of one half. We do have to find u prime, let's do that now. u prime would be one half times x to the power of one half minus one, or negative one half. Well, this is the same as one over two times the square root of x. Move this down to the denominator and write it as the square root of x. Now we can apply our differentiation rule f prime of x is equal to u prime, one over two square root x, divided by one plus u squared. Well, the square root of x squared would just be x. This is our derivative, but we cannot leave it in this form. Remember, a fraction bar is just a division symbol. So this would be one over two square root of x. Instead of dividing by one plus x, we could multiply by the reciprocal, which would be one over one plus x. So our derivative would be one divided by two square root x times the quantity one plus x. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have f of x equals arc secant five x. So u is equal to five x. So u prime is equal to five. So f prime of x is equal to u prime, which would be five, divided by the absolute value of u, absolute value of five x, times the square root of u squared minus one. U squared would be 25 x squared minus one. Now we can simplify this a little bit further. This is a positive five inside the absolute value symbol. If we factor this five out, it's still going to be positive. Therefore, we can simplify this factor of five with this factor of five. Notice the x still stays inside the absolute value. So we would have one divided by the square root of x times the square root of 25 x squared minus one. Now, don't be tempted to simplify this. This is a difference of squares where it would factor into five x plus one and five x minus one. So we don't have two equal factors here. So this is as simplified as we can get it. 
So now we have f of x equals 2 times the arc cosine of x over 3. So u is equal to x divided by 3, or we could think of this as 1 third x. So u prime equals 1 third. Here's our derivative rule. So f prime of x equals negative u prime, so negative 1 third, divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. 1 minus u squared would be x squared over 3 squared, or x squared over 9. Again, this is our derivative, but it's not in very good form. Let's see if we can simplify this. Remember, this is just a division problem, so this is negative 1 third times the reciprocal of our denominator. So it would be 1 over the square root, 1 minus x squared over 9. Now let's go ahead and multiply these fractions together. The product is negative. The numerator is equal to 1. Now let's look at our denominator. This 3 is outside the square root. If we were to bring it inside the square root, it would change to a 9 because the square root of 9 would give us this 3 out here. So this is really the same as the square root of 9 times 1 minus x squared divided by 9. And the reason we might want to do this is because now we can eliminate the fractions underneath the square root. This would simplify to negative 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared. And this is typically how most textbooks prefer the answer to be written. And you can see why it does look a little more simplified. So the final form of the derivative would be this. I think we have time for one more. Determine the derivative of f of t equals sine of arc cosine t. Let's see if we can simplify this function before we try to find its derivative. Arc cosine t would return some angle theta, where the cosine function value would be equal to t or t over 1. So if we let this angle equal theta, the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse would be t to 1. Now, using the Pythagorean theorem, we could show that the length of this side would have to be the square root of 1 minus t squared. Let's go back to our function now. Arc cosine t returns some angle theta, and now we want to find the sine of angle theta. Well, the sine of angle theta would be the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, or the square root of 1 minus t squared, to 1, which means that this function, f of t, is really just the sine of that angle, which would be the square root of 1 minus t squared. So now we can find the derivative of this function rather than the derivative of this composite function involving an inverse trig function. To do that, we would probably want to rewrite this as f of t equals the quantity 1 minus t squared to the 1 half power. So to find the derivative of this, we'll apply the power rule with the chain rule. So the derivative of the outer function would be 1 half, there's our u to the 1 half minus 1, that'd be negative 1 half, times u prime. Well, this is our u, so it would be negative 2t. Now we'll simplify this 2 and this 2 simplify. And so our derivative is equal to negative t would be in the numerator, and this would be in the denominator, so we'd have the square root of 1 minus t squared. Okay, I hope you found these explanations helpful. Thank you for watching.